Hello, marhaba. Thank you for joining us at the podcast by Shalhoub Group. Innovation is at the heart of everything we do, and entrepreneurial spirit is a core value and a key to success. We do that by systematically embedding teams, departments, and leaders who curate, create, and innovate brands and services. Today, I have with me Furat Al Haider, who is the director of beauty innovation at our group, and also a big shot on social media. Hi, Furat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having. Me. It's a true pleasure to be here. Well, we're very happy to have you for several reasons, but I think we've waited to the 30th podcast because we want to talk about beauty innovation and create more energy for people to come to us and talk about their brands and what they can innovate with you and with your team. So tell us a bit more about your role, how you got here and what you do today at our group. Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, like I said, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, even though it's the 30th episode. I should have been here earlier. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> so all is good. Um, no, it's a true pleasure. And I honestly, like, I think that this is quite interesting to, you know, learn about people's stories as well, but to have kind of the inside information that you don't always get. Um, so my name is Farat. I'm originally Iraqi, born and raised in Sweden. I grew up my whole life in Sweden, got my bachelor's in business, my master's in um, globalization and branding and consumption theories. Um, so when I was 21, when I finished, I came to Dubai and I almost immediately got a job in Shell Hoop. So I started in strategy and innovation. And then I had a very long journey and it's been, I think, uh, 11 years, if I'm not mistaken now. Inshallah, we will add to those years as well very soon. Um, I started also, you know, working in brand acquisition, um, business development. And that's where the whole idea came in and where I started pitching ideas about how to create brands, how to create concepts. And more importantly, also like about how to revolutionize what we're doing as well. Um, in 2020, I was asked to uh, take over Gawali, which is our own modern oriental, um, I would say it was an oriental brand as well back then. We've changed quite a lot to make it modern oriental niche. I'm sure we'll touch upon it a little bit later. And um, in, I think more than one year ago, I became the director of beauty innovation, where our job is to create brands for the group and create the equity for the group as well. And the most important thing is, of course, to make sure that you create something that speaks to the consumers. That's really interesting. And I, just to confirm and maybe clarify to our audiences, our business model at Shalhoub Group is the leading luxury partner. We partner with brands, leading international brands, and represent them here in the region. And the way that we keep that entrepreneurial spirit, as I said, and innovation at heart is also realizing the need for the consumer. So why do we have beauty innovation and how does this serve our consumers? I think, yeah, I think there are a few touch points here that are, and thank you for bringing this up. I mean, the first thing with beauty innovation is that, you know, we have been for, you know, a very long time, the main partner, translator, and I would say probably one of the greatest translators in the world, not just in, in this part of the world, when it comes to bringing the luxury brands into this region. I think, you know, it's also been time now since the region is very, very ready to create something for the culture. And more importantly, as we say in beauty innovation, is to actually export that culture to the rest of the world. We have something beautiful here. We have a story to tell. And this is our job as well. When it comes to the business models, you know, we've created some things from scratch. We've created things, co-created things with certain people, partners as well. And I think that everything that we do is co-creation, no matter what it is. And in the sense that in, for example, Rawali and other brands, we're always looking at incorporating the culture. And that means that we're creating a community and as a platform, which means that we're always inviting people, whether it's um, a photographer, an artist, um, anything, honestly, a painter, a poet to be part of this community. And like I said, it's a culture that we have, which is beautiful. And we create it for the region first, but we're also going global. And for that reason is because we, we're doing very interesting, exciting things that can speak to a wider audience. That's... Uh Great. And Rawali is a great example that you mentioned. So let's talk about Rawali. Sure. Uh, fragrance, it's yes. big in our region. People love it. There's a, a mix of cosmopolitan culture that we see in the, in the GCC specifically. Uh, the West and the East meet. Some like Oud and yes. some like lighter fragrances. So how does Rawali uh, fit in this ecosystem? I think that, you know, what's quite important to mention is that, um, you know, Rawali was created in 2016. Um, in a world which was quite different than today, especially when you're talking about this region. So Rawali was created as an oriental ritual player, because if you go back a little bit more in history, um, back then you had the oriental brands and then you had the commercial brands. You didn't have the niche to that level. 
what happened afterwards is that the niche category kind of like emerged these two together. So you had, you know, the, the stronger, more intense perfumes, but also from an international perspective. And you see the Privé collections of all the international brands. So that has changed quite a lot as well. So when it comes to Rawali, what we did in 2020 when we took over is that we changed that branding to really tell the story of the consumers today. Because if you go to the Oriental brands, they talk a little bit more about the, the heritage and the desert Arabian sand and the Sahara and the sub-Sahara. But that's not the consumer that we see today. You know what I mean? You see today like a beautiful you know, lady and a consumer who was wearing an abaya that speaks her culture and heritage, but she will still have that Chanel bag. She will have those shoes that are really, really international as well. And she will use that makeup or products or perfumes that are mixing. So what we needed to create with Rawal is that mix. And that's why we moved into what we call modern oriental niche, combining those worlds by putting the culture in the middle of everything that we do. Great. And accordingly, you also partner, as you said, with the local talents in order always. to bring the story to life and bring it into Always, always. So brand curation, brand transformation and brand creation. I think what could be interesting to share is if someone has an interesting idea or maybe a product that has potential, what should they do to come to you and make it a real uh, brand that launches and is successful? Yeah, I think, you know, this is something that goes out to people internally as well, not just externally, even people who have ideas in Shalhoub, because one of the great things that I've, I've loved about Shalhoub since I joined is that there's a lot of information that's being shared. You get inspired by a lot of people. It could honestly be someone who has nothing to do with the work that you're doing. You know, for example, in Rawali, I, I personally create the perfumes myself. And, and I find it as such an interesting job. And I'm not a nose. I have a big nose, but I'm not a nose. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's more about like you take inspiration from, from things on a daily basis. Now, one of the things I'd like to mention when it comes to, to creation as well is that nowadays, and we've seen it a lot, when I was in brand acquisition, you know, early days of brand acquisition, I was sent, let's say, one perfume niche brand a month. And then as we went it almost became like three brands per week that was being sent to me. So people started creating brands as well quite a lot. I think if you want to create something, it's not enough nowadays. And I'm just being super honest. It's not enough just to have ambition. It's not enough just to have a product. It's not enough just to have passion. You need to have something which is more 360 and a drive. And, and one of the things that I've learned from Patrick Shalhoub himself, our, our group president, is that you need to really make sure that you, you invest in the right people as well. So it has to be someone who speaks all of the values and who might need some guidance, which is absolutely fine, but it's more about you know putting all of those in one basket and driving forward. And honestly, someone who has a lot of agility, someone who knows how to maneuver. We know that we're gonna get to Tokyo. We were supposed to take a direct flight, didn't happen. It's fine, we'll take a flight somewhere, we'll get off, We'll take a boat, we'll take the ferry, we'll bicycle a little bit, we run, but we're gonna get there. You know what I mean? And that's the mindset that you need. That's a great mindset for innovation. I think it's the minimum to have when uh, when you're creating and curating things. So beauty, when we talk beauty, of course, as a category, yes. it includes um, makeup, it includes skincare and fragrances and maybe hair care, right? So yeah. this is the whole category and it's I, I would say, if I, if I just may, um, not just fragrances, scents. Sense. Because uh, mm. fragrances and scents, it's also home scents, for an example, a home category. Candles as well, that's also beauty, for example. And what do you have as the kind of top things on your radar from this category? I'm not going to say, don't tell us anything confidential, but we want some, you know, You want the juice a little bit, juice, you know? Yeah, for our audience before no, I mean, the consumers. No, definitely. I, uh, I think that, you know, this part of the world, perfumes, niche perfumes is always exciting and interesting. We have a project where we're looking at co-creating with someone very influential in the community and someone who speaks volumes in the culture. So that's one of the projects. We're also looking at a project which is very innovative. Um, and sometimes we thought that maybe we're a few steps ahead of the market, but we in Beauty Innovation, of course, don't think so. And it's a hybrid skincare and makeup brand. We're also talking about hair care. Hair care, which is super science, but also super cultural driven, which means that they understand what's needed exactly for this part of the world. Um, we're talking also quite a lot about, um, let's say, sense on the go. We're talking about um, selective home care, home as well, but home with a very artistic approach where it's a lot of collaboration with designers in this region to tell a specific story. 
So wow. quite a lot of projects, <laughs> but uh, honestly, Super. It, is this it's all just in 2024? <laughs> Should we expect all I mean, of this I, this year? Or? You'll see, you'll see some in 24, you'll see okay. something in 25, Amazing. but we have a great team. That's, I, I absolutely love seeing them on a daily basis, battling each other out, whether it's a commercial <laughs> team or the operational team or the, the branding team. And I think that that's what creates the innovation. You know, it's just that it's a safe zone for people to shoot ideas. Some ideas come from a lot of data and intelligence, but at the end of the day, when you're innovation, a lot of it comes from the heart and mind, you know, where you shoot ideas and you build upon others' ideas as well. I love how um, this is part and parcel of also as, of being part of the community. Like you talked about it, and I think we need to shed light a bit more uh, on this uh, on this aspect because as part of our responsibility is to build a thriving economy to support local designers and local partners. So would you say that you are focusing on that as well as targeting the consumer? Of course, I think um, it goes about, you know, a little bit more into, you need to tell the story of the region, but it also has to make sense from a business mindset. Because at the end of the day, yes, you're right. I think that, you know, one of the key steps that sometimes people forget is that it's true. Everything has to be built from a consumer at heart. That's what we do and everything that we do. But we also have other stakeholders, you know, is this a brand that's going to go to digital? Is it going to go to retailers? So you need to be convincing them as well. However, one of the things like to give you an example with Rawali, we're relaunching the incense, which is the Bukhur of Rawali. And we've made it much more, I would say, on an international scale because we really believe that people also in the future will use that globally as well. And the names that we've chosen, like for example, one of the names that we've chosen is called Stories by the Door. Because us in the Arab culture, which means Literally. that when you're supposed to say goodbye at the door, you get stuck because you don't want that laugh and joy and excitement to leave until the next time I see you. So it's more about how we incorporate it, not just from a, a scent perspective, from but a from creative. a storytelling perspective, you know what I mean? And that's why it's very, very important to play around on that and placing the consumer at heart. I love, I can't wait to, uh, to have uh, some of these as well. So as you know, and our audience knows as well, we've asked people questions on social media. So now is the fun part. We talked business. Uh, we asked people to submit questions yeah, for you. Sure. So are you ready? Go okay. for it. Where do you see yourself and Rawali in five years? I, uh, I'm going to answer that question the way I answered the five years question, I think like five years ago, to be honest with you. I had a, I had a one-to-one -one with uh, Patrick Shalhoub and it was a very interesting conversation we had. And he said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, I have two answers. And he said, go for it. I said, the first answer is that I want to be in Shelhub for a long time where I see myself as a strong pillar, someone that people can rely on and someone that they know that he can get the job done and keep on innovating what we do. He said, that's great. What's number two? I said, number two is that the first thing is not true. It's basically that this was five years ago. I'm born in the 90s. We think one year ahead. And that's how it works in reality. Jokes aside, um, I think Awali and myself in five years, we're going to have those brands on an international scale. And that has already been set in motion. We're already exploring key partners across the world as well, not just for Gawali, but for other things that we create. Like I said in the opening statement, if you wish, which is that we have a beautiful culture that we need to export and tell the story of this region. We're not just consumers of other brands. We should now be exporters of other brands as well. So that's, that's where amazing. I see myself in five years. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Uh, we also know that you have innovated uh, and supported another beauty innovation called WOW, which is a private label for Faces brand. So yes. technically, when you co-create and create, then it fits into the right, uh, the right business model in, in beauty. But the question is, how much time does it take you? Or very briefly, if we can, because I know it's a lot of hard work and the process is, is not as easy as we would simplify it. But from concept or idea to execution and business as usual. Give us a bit of, of that journey. It's, it's, it truly, really depends on what you're trying to create. And I'll tell you exactly why. You know, certain concepts... It's because it's such a far-fetched idea. So by the time you, you know, you sit and you think about it and you keep on like, you know, it's like a cooking, you know, like the dough and you keep on like I don't cook. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I haven't cooked in uh, <laughs> a quite a long time, to be honest with you, but that can take some time. Other things, to be honest with you, goes really, really fast. But then you have, for example, also the production lead times. If you want something to be produced in France, it could take longer than producing something in the UAE. 
that could be one thing. Another thing that can also affect the lead times is that we sometimes have um, retailers who will tell you, you know what, Farata, I just love this idea. However, I have space in my store in nine months. And then you take that into consideration. But everything can go literally from three months to 18 months, depending on what you want to create and how you want to create it. And also we have to be very honest about something which uh, we tend to forget is that being an open community to a certain level as well and allowing people's feedback as well, it's great because you get a lot of things that you can build upon. However, it also means it takes that- more time. Yeah, <laughs> everyone, you know, they start to like, so at one point you just need to structure yeah. it a little bit yourself. And therefore you need a very agile team as we spoke. Super and, agile uh, team. To be able to start over Always. several times. So um, next question that we got, what, what's one of your most important beauty tips? Um, in terms of creation well, or personal use? as a beauty use? leader, but also there are a lot of questions about your personal perfect hair and, and outfits so I think um, like a, a great personal tip to be honest with you and, and it's going to sound maybe a bit philosophical but love what you do because when you love what you do you actually get inspired to you, you, you honestly look and feel good that's number one the second thing is that you get inspired to you know take that extra second as well but, you know, going back to me personally, I'm not going to lie, you know, my mom has great skin. <laughs> my mom <laughs> looks beautiful. So that has helped a little bit. I'm glad I probably have like 10% of That's my mom as well. Skin care is, is, you have the genetics as well. For uh, my, my mom, I take care of my skin as well. I drink a lot of water, as you can see here as well. But, you know, other than that as well, it's, it's just because I have such a passion. I really enjoy perfumes as well. I enjoy putting and trying new products as well. It's just that we live and I'm super blessed to be in an environment where I actually breathe the same values that we're actually trying to speak to. So that's yeah. for me as an a advantage that just makes it super easy. And I love that we're debunking skincare and personal care for men as well. So I think, I hope that everyone is at the same level as you are. Last question, which is what's your advice for someone who wants to create their own perfume or I would say beauty brand? Just don't Quickly. do it. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. So, um, Come to me, I'll help you. No, I mean, I'm, we're always there to help, to be honest with you. And I think it's just like we help people, you always get like one or two percent that can information that feeds you back, to be honest. So we're always happy to do that. I think that, like I said earlier, you know, with the amount of brands that we've seen and everything that we've seen, there's a lot of noise and you need to create something that has a true story. You have to be authentic and you need to create something that can penetrate through that noise. And, and by authenticity, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Like we, we have a perfume in Rawali called Midnight Noise. And, and to be very honest with you, that was literally me driving home from Jumeirah to downtown around midnight. And I was really overthinking and I was like, maybe I should have told her this. Maybe I should have said this. Maybe I should have done that. And as I was saying that to myself, stuck at the traffic light, there's a song by Majid Mohandis called Naqsak Shay, where he says, Basically, I called you out at night. My echo told me to go back to bed. So when I got home, I literally, I literally took a you know pen and paper and wrote, nothing is louder than overthinking at midnight. AM thoughts that never make it's it PM really conversations. Beautiful. So, so you know, these are the things that makes it very authentic. So my recommendation is be authentic, be different, be a bit bold as well. And also make sure that you have a very agile mindset because not everything is going to go the way that you think it's going to go, but that's okay because that's part of the process. And one thing that we always say in the beauty innovation team that I think that people hate me for is trust the process because even us in Shalhub, we are so used to a few things that I always say is that we're so used to, if you put it on football terms, buying Zidane and Figo because you have all the biggest brands, but it's very, very different when you have to create Zidane from scratch. It takes more time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of heart and it takes a lot of, let's say, persistency. So as an advice to all of those people, and, and I see more and more of those people, and it's a true pleasure to see them as well, internally and externally as well, have that persistence, have, the, have that agility. And even if someone tells you some feedback that you might perceive as negative, see it as constructive and push through. There's a lot of noise. So the world is quite tough and you need to make sure that you're tougher than them and keep your mindset and the innovative mindset, no matter how many Excel sheets you need to go through. <laughs> yes, there's always that admin part and that 
uh, persistence that is needed with every creation, I'm sure. Thank you very much, for us for all your insights, the beautiful oh, advice pleasure. and tips. I'm sure you're going to get even more questions after this uh, podcast. Shoot, feel is released. free, honestly. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Beauty, skincare, hair care. If you have big ideas, if you have something cool you want to share, you know now who to contact. And uh, please stay in touch and give us your feedback. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much, Jen. Truly appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.